we're going to be working on the same laptop that we did in the previous video. This is the Asus Q302L where we changed the charging port connector on it. After we changed the charging port, I tested the voltage at this point and it's given 19 volts. When the customer brought this in, we were not getting 19 volts at the positive side of the connector. So the connector had to be changed. Now, after we changed the charging port connector, laptop is still not powering on using the charging cable. It is powering on using the battery, but not the charging cable, and the cable is not able to charge this laptop. So there is obviously something else going on. Right now, if we remove the battery and try to power this laptop on using the charging cable, the laptop will not power on. It will only power on on a charged battery. Let's go near the charging connector that we did right over here. And we should have two MOSFETs nearby, right there. Uh, these are most likely N-type MOSFETs. Pin number one, two, three are usually the source. Pin number four is the gate, and these four pins here are the drain. One moment. The purpose of those two MOSFETs is uh, to protect the circuit, in case maybe you have another charger plugged in where the polarity is uh, opposite you do not fry this board so we need to have voltage on the gate in order for voltage to pass from drain to source right now if we test drain we should have 19 volts if we test drain we should have 19 volts last time what we did when we changed the charging port connector is we tested this pin here and this one is giving us 19 volts when the customer brought this computer in this pin was not giving us 19 volts because the charging connector was bad so right now we are getting 19 volts and as you can see so i'm testing the positive pin of the connector and we get 19 volts now if we go to the mosfets on the drain we should be getting 19 volts any one of those pins is the drain we are getting 19 volts of course 19 19 and 19 this is all connected as one pin Let's measure the gate. The gate is giving us zero. Because there is no voltage coming onto the gate, drain is not going to pass the voltage onto the source. If we test the source right now, zero. Everything is zero. Let's test the drain here. This is the drain. We should be getting 19 volts. And look at that. We are getting 10.5 volts. So there's a leak. A leak could be caused by a partial short. Do we have any voltage on the gate here? We do not, zero volt. When we have voltage on the gate above the threshold of the chip, resistance of the chip will go down, which allows current to go from drain to source. When we have zero volts on the gate, then resistance goes up, which acts as an insulator between the drain and source, so no voltage will flow between drain to source. So right now, we are getting 19 volts here but no voltage on gate since we do not have voltage on gate this voltage is not going to pass on to the source so if we test the mosfet here the drain we should be getting 19 volts and this 19 volts is coming directly from the charging connector from here since we do not have voltage on the gate then this voltage is not going to pass itself from drain to source which means the voltage is not going to pass to the rest of the board meter in diode mode let me test the drain, test the source, test the source and the drain. Look at that. Drain is giving us a short. Drain on this IC is giving a short. No short, no short on the drain here. This explains why we have 10 volts on the drain here and not 19. There's a short going on here. Meter in diode mode, red probe on ground and probe on drain, we have a short. Hi, uh, I'm Justin. Is my laptop for NSI ready? Uh, which laptop is it? So let's go ahead and remove this chip. Okay, that's it.
Let's put that chip on the side and quickly clean up this area. Right now we tested a short on this side of the MOSFET, which is the drain. Let's go ahead and test again to see if we still have a short. And we do. So I want to see if I have the charging cable plugged in. Do we still get 10 volts on the drain? Let's test. And yes, we still have 10 volts here. What I'm going to do is remove this chip as well. So what can cause a short on the board? We have capacitors that can cause a short or maybe some other ICs on the board that could cause a short. What we're gonna do is start by testing the capacitors nearby, randomly. And we do not have a short here. Let's test this one here. And we do not have a short. Let's test this one. No short. Anything else here? Resistors do not cause a short, so we do not need to test any of the resistors here. Oh, look at that. We have a short here. So this whole line is shorted. Do we have a short here? We do not have a short here, but we have a short here. So this whole 19 volt pad here is connected to the drain side of the MOSFET. Let's continue working on the board. I had to leave this on Saturday because time was running out. Today is Monday, brand new day. And what we did so far is we removed the MOSFETs, but we still have a short on the board. Let's go back to the area. We do not have a circuit diagram for this board but we figured out that the drain is connected, is shorted because of these capacitors here. We do not know which one is causing the short. Like, let's measure this one. Short the ground. So what I'm going to do is apply voltage to the drain here, and then we're gonna monitor the board under a thermal cam to see what gets hot. And that way we can pinpoint the component that is causing the short. So in order to do this, we're going to solder a wire onto the drain and then we're going to feed voltage onto it. So the caps that tested for a short are right over here. Let me bump the voltage up to 19 volts. And let's see. We're not going to be able to use our floor cam. We have the wire connected to the drain of the MOSFET so we can feed 19 volts onto it. As soon as we turn the 19 volts on, the power supply shows 3 amp current draw, which means that the motherboard is drawing a lot of amps. There's a short on the board, but then it uh, goes down to zero amp draw. So the circuit is shutting itself down. So it doesn't cause any damage on to other components on the board. We will not be able to use the floor cam or the thermal cam. So we have to do this manually, try to see if we can figure this out. So uh, we tested all those caps as being short, starting from this one here. This is shorted, short, 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 short. Which one is the bad one? Well, I have no idea. Can we guess? Maybe. One of them looks discolored, which is the last one here. We can start with this one. We'll remove it and test to see if we still have a short. 
If not, then we put it back and remove the other ones. So let's move it onto the side. And let's test. Do we still have a short? And look at that. The short is gone. We do not have a short anymore. Let's measure the drain to see if we have a short still. And no more short. Awesome. We're going to put the MOSFETs back. I believe the MOSFETs are good. And we're going to plug the charger in. And hopefully the laptop will turn on using the charger. And it will charge the laptop. The capacitor is a bypass capacitor, so we do not have to put it back. There are other bypass capacitors that will do the job. We do not even know the value of the capacitor, but it doesn't matter. The laptop will still power on. Bypass capacitors are used to filter noise. battery is disconnected as you can see right here no connection and let's try to power it on using the charger awesome um, so I was calling to uh, repair AZ at Xbox One S um, HDMI port cable. So as you can see, the laptop is charging. You see the amber light here. And everything is good. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.